Today we're going to have a quick look at the Top Don RT Link 201 model. And this is what you get here you get the code reader, you get a USB cable, and you get the manual. This is kind of a no frills basic unit, but as you'll see in the video coverage, it has a lot of features. This unit has almost five foot of cable, so reading the codes outside of your car or in the passenger seat are no problem at all. The included USB cable plugs into the bottom of the reader, then into your computer, which you can download updates directly to your code scanner. And those are free lifetime updates. And as mentioned, this is a real basic, easy to use model. You can see there's not a lot of buttons here. You've got an OK button, up and down, a back button, an I slash M, and then you have these two indicators right here. It's just a Y and an N. And you'll see in the footage when you are ready to do something, the Y will light up. I did not get the N to light up, so I suppose if you did something in error, maybe that would light up. But that's it. The back of the unit. Again, there's the USB cable or charging port, and then the cable. Now here's the manual. It's kind of basic because this is a really easy model to use. You've got your table of contents. This is all your safety features and whatnot. And this kind of tells you where about you would plug in the OBD2 sensor. Now, in my on-board footage of the video, I kind of explain that, but this gives you a little bit more of a, an explanation. And then right here gives you some sample codes. So, like the P would be the symptom, powertrain, B would be body, C would be chassis, uh, U would be network, and then the code types, and then the subsystems. But you can also check those out online. You can just do a search. So if you've got a GM or just about any car, you put P0113 or whatever it is, and you'll pretty much be able to find that code. And then here is how to operate the unit. So this kind of tells you, I did not even look at this before I used it, but this tells you everything we've kind of went over. The IM button tests the IM status. There's up and down, the back button, to exit, wind in the indicator light, and then it gives you the specifications. And then set up the read test, the beeper. And we went over all this in our on screen footage, which I'll show you here in a moment. It's pretty detailed, even though it's a small manual, it, it gives you everything you need. There's really not much left out of here. 19 pages. It tells you where to go to do your update on your actual reader. So if you go to topdon.us, connect the port to your computer, and then you can go to work. Now, I'm not sure if this works on Mac. I use a Mac, so we'll have to find out. I haven't tested it yet. One thing to note, this will not reset SRS lights. This is a basic model with a lot of features. If you're looking for something to reset SRS, you're going to have to go with a little bit more expensive model. And I tested one of these earlier maybe about a year or two ago, that model will do that. So I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below to that model as well. We'll go ahead and measure just so you can get an idea of size. We're just at five inches as far as the length. Width, we are at about two and three quarter. And thickness, we are three quarters of an inch. So again, it's pretty small. I'm gonna actually put this in my glove box, take it with me if I decide to purchase any used cars or anything like that. Now we're going to go to the footage where I actually test this model in car. Now I did that earlier. I did not look at the manual. That's how easy this is to use. If you never use one of these, you can skim through it or read it from cover to cover. It's up to you. It's really short, but super easy to use. Be sure to check out the links below, the Amazon links. I'll have a link directly to this model. Currently it's $34.99 and if you're a Prime member, it's free shipping. Now, at the time of this video, at the time you view it, it could be more or less, but at $34.99, it's a heck of a bargain. And for this test, we're going to be using my 2007 CRV. We have a few other vehicles we could test it on, but this is the oldest one and the only one I really want to open the hood up and throw an error code. To connect the code reader, it's going to be under your dash. So on a Honda, it happens to be over here on the right hand side and it's kind of tilted down. On a Dodge, it's going to be on the left, straight up. Similar on a Mercedes and most vehicles, it's always going to be under the dash. Now, we did have a, I think it's a Nissan where it was to the right, like behind the center console. You didn't have to take a panel off, but it's right there. But check out your owner's manual and you'll find out where to plug this in. If not, look online. It only goes in one way. Just plug this in, 
turn your vehicle into the on position without the engine running. Now you can run the engine if you want to read codes, but in order to erase those codes, you're going to have to turn it off. It's going to have to be ready to go, but not running. And we've got it plugged into the CRV here. You can see where the cable is coming out of the dash right there. I'm using a flashlight because it's a little bit dark in here. And then we've got our code reader right here. And we've got plenty of length right there. We can stand outside the vehicle, put it in the passenger seat, and there's some features that you'll see when I go over, like you can do some diagnostics or some actual real-time data, that you can actually keep this plugged in, throw it in your passenger seat, and watch your RPMs, your speed, everything from this little device. Once you have the unit plugged into the port with the vehicle in the on position, you'll get this screen right here. Actually, I believe it comes up before you go to the on position, but you'll want to put the vehicle in the on position. You see right here, you've got your OBD2, EOBD readout, you got ready test, setup, and then about. So we're gonna use our buttons, our up and down buttons to scroll through here. So let's just go to the OBD2, hit okay, and it's entering the system. And it gives you all the features you need. So scan, also you've got a Y here that's highlighted in green. There's also an N, the Y means we're ready. And at the bench, you'll be able to see those, but you can't see those in this video right now. Your okay button, your up and down keys, and then your back key and then your I and M key. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it on OBD2. We're gonna click OK. It's going to go through entering the system. And you've got all your diagnostics right there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna read codes. So let's go down to read codes, which are right there. We're gonna erase codes, do all kinds of things. There's your O2 sensor test onboard monitoring. First we'll go to setup. We're just using our up and down buttons here. We'll click OK. And then language, units of measure, and then beeper. So you could go units of measure. You could change it to we'll hit OK, miles per hour. And then all your different temperature change to Fahrenheit, so I'm just click, clicking OK, that changes to Fahrenheit. Click OK to get change it again. We'll go back out and all those settings are saved. I'm hitting the back button here to go back out. You can use your up and down buttons to get to the next one, so we'll go to Ready Test, click OK, and there's the IM Readiness. You can also, we'll hit back, you can also get there and just hit IM. Let's go ahead and go to the OBD2 EOBD. So we're going to hit our up arrow, there we are, and click OK. This is just reading the system. So if we hit the down button, we can read codes. But let's go ahead and click on the current. Let's go ahead and click on the current DTCs just to see what we get. This vehicle has no fault codes. We'll go back. Again, we're hitting the back button. We'll scroll down to pending. There's no pending ones either, which we already know. And then permanent ones. We'll click OK. And there are no permanent ones. Go back. You can erase codes. View graphic items. Calculated load, look at that. Go back. Engine coolant temperature. Reading just takes a few minutes. Let's go back. Short, short term fuel bank. Go back. And we've got some other ones here. We'll scroll down all those. Most of the stuff I'm never going to use. 
engine RPM. Let's go to that one. It's giving us our minimum and max. Go ahead and give it a rev. Go ahead and we'll go through all of those. I'm not going to name them. We'll just go through them and you could actually look at them. So here's page one. Page two. Oh, sorry, we got to scroll down. Page two. Page three. Page four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And then last but not least, nine. Start over. Back button here. I'm going to view all item, and here they are right here. So you're going to have 10 pages of this. And this is while the vehicle's running. I'll hit the down button. Go to freeze frame and see what that does. So there's freeze frame. So this vehicle doesn't have any freeze frame data. So this must be something you can store in the ECU. I'm not sure. This is my first time using this. It's really easy to use, by the way. And they all are, but this, uh, for the size, it's, <laughs> it's really convenient. Just throw it in the glove box. And we're back, and we've Throw in a simple code. Let's uh, start it up and read our codes. We're going to go up to read codes. Click OK. Click OK here. Ooh, we've got a code. So intake air temperature. It's high. Go back. Let's see if we have any pending codes, which we should. B0113. Let's go ahead and erase our code. Yes, we want to erase it. We've got the vehicle turned off in the on position. It's cleared. So let's go back again. Let's read. Now the vehicle's not on, but it is in the on position. You can see we're getting another code this time. P0102. And we still have the P0113. May have had that code before. I actually didn't hit the up and down. You got to hit the up and down to go through the codes if you have more than one. So let's go ahead and correct the error, fix the mass airflow on the car. I just unplugged it, and then we'll go back and erase and then read the code. Let's read codes again. They're still there. Let's go ahead and erase these codes. Go back, erase codes. Yes, we want to erase them. Got all that done. You can hear it communicating. They've all been cleared. Let's go back and read the codes again. No codes. See, this tiny code reader has a ton of features packed within it. More than I'll probably ever use, but it's nice to know that if I ever have anything odd or anything, I can actually use this to test it out. Mostly, I use them to check engine codes and fix a problem and then erase them. 
And that makes it really nice because this can go in my glove box. It's so small. I mean, my hand covers it up. It's smaller than my hand, way smaller. And I can put it in the glove box and always know it's right there. I can put it in my pocket. If I'm going to go buy a car, stick it in my pocket. The cabling is going to be bigger than the code reader itself, but plug it into a car and make sure there's no codes on it right there on the spot. Instead of lugging something around in a toolbox or anything like that, just keep this nice and handy. Uh, you put it in little bags, certainly, but it'll fit in your pocket all day long. Be sure to check out the links in the description. I'll have an Amazon affiliate link directly to this product. You can see it's got a great price, great reviews. I'll also have some links to other tools that I use within the shop. So anything from woodworking to the camera, all that will be in those links. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I try to put videos out once a month. Hopefully we'll get on a more regular schedule and I can put them out once a week with some woodworking, some tool reviews, flashlights, all that good stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.